By the way, we have to say we have Mike McCready coming in from Pearl Jam, and Travis is a very big Pearl Jam fan. Are you nervous? No. Okay. Have you met him? <laughs> no. He's got that glass to protect him. And inside the Travis box, nobody can hurt you. That's true. It's my safe space. Yeah. I want Travis to take part in this today. He should. He's the ultimate Pearl Jam fan. I wouldn't say that. I wrote a few questions for oh, Travis. Good. Good. I'm, I'm, I, I want to give these to him because I know we have Kevin Brennan and I. I was racking my brain and I couldn't think of it. And I wanted to. I figure if none of them are mean. Here's the problem. <laughs> Travis gets nervous. He gets very nervous around the people he likes. He does. Around us. Right. Yeah, Troy, day. can you bring this to Travis? I don't you know don't what to say. The Thank worry you. is that we'll say, hey, Travis, why don't you talk to one of your music idols, Yeah, Mike McCready, and then he'll choke. And we don't want to make Travis look bad. The questions I wrote are good questions. They're eager questions. None of them are mean. None of them are horrible things that I wouldn't say to Ozzy. Like, you know, none of them are awful. Fan questions. Fan questions. But they have to be... I, I wrote them how I want you to say them, if possible. Yeah, I get it. I mean, <laughs> Travis is, is coming at this from the Pearl Jam fan perspective. Sure. Like, we are the broadcasters here. And we're, we're the host, but we need somebody with the fan perspective that's going to ask those questions. Maybe this will get on some Pearl Jam blogs, right? I, I think so. They're not horrible questions. Should, should he give examples of Yeah, give one. Okay. They're not bad questions, right? <laughs> they're not mean? No, they're not. Right. So I think I haven't read them. I haven't heard the questions yet. No. But, but I just want him to ask with the eagerness. If you think I'm going to be able to ask these without laughing. <laughs> what? Don't, no, don't laugh. You yeah, know. yeah, try, try the first one. Yeah, like, it's, it's not even a bad question. It's a good question let's from just, a fan. Yeah, okay. let's just see. Uh, so, Mike, all kidding aside, <laughs> when you're out there and you're rocking, is there any better feeling? It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a good question. It's a really good question. I mean, I want to find out. In theory, yeah. Like, <laughs> is there anything you like better than than performing? Than rocking, but you just gotta ask like that. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't rate, worded a certain way because I want to find out. Through. Yeah. It's like I, I watch guys rock out <laughs> on stage. Yeah, and I think to myself, that's got to be the best <laughs> feeling in the world. But I don't have that confirmed. Travis can do these. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think. So. Is there any other? Did you just write the one? No, or? no. There's a couple. No, oh, there's only like six. Oh, what's that? What's like one other? What's the second one? Are you guys? <laughs> what? I don't... Are you guys gigging anytime soon? It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. I mean, it's probably the question everybody wants to know. Well, yeah, right. If you guys are gigging, because they haven't question. they haven't played a show this year. Yeah, right. it, but it's also good because Mike McCree has <clears throat> been in a couple bands. So the fact that you're using the nondescript pronoun guys, yeah. Uh, it could. It's so open ended. Absolutely. It anywhere. It doesn't necessarily mean Pearl Jam. Well, I mean he's not in the other bands because other members are dead. Well, you could. I mean, yeah, but you could replace a lead singer. They replaced the girl from uh, Kevin <laughs> yeah, Can Wait. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you just bring in uh, Eddie Vedder to be uh, chairman of the dog or whatever that thing is called. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you. Uh, I like how you give me some physical cues. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> he does have a cue in this one. Is that to be more, like, just natural and kind in of flowing? Yeah. yeah, good. good. Uh, the fans who are in this book must be floating on cloud nine. I know I would. I've been a fan since I was, like, yay high. <laughs> 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 it says in parentheses, hand extended. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, though. To get the full uh, physical effect of the question... I do think that when we do the interview, question one and two should be done in the Tef box. I agree. And question three, um, maybe the Travis dog should say, would you guys mind if I came in the studio to ask this one? Sure. And then he could come in, and that way we could we could find out what yay high is. I've been a fan since I was like, yay high. Right. Yeah, I that's a great fan question. That should be, so can you, can you, <laughs> can you please remember to ask if you can come into the studio to ask that third question? Yeah. Okay. Okay, is there another one? I mean, yeah, there's five more. Oh, there is another one. There's a couple more, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, All good. <clears throat> oh. I mean, the last one's not a question. It's more no? a statement. Sure. Oh, a couple of them are kind of statements. Yeah. I'm a hardcore fan. I wanted to name my daughter elderly woman behind the counter in a small town. Ha ha. But my wife wasn't having it. That's good. That's really cool. Because then he could give... I mean, it does sound like yeah. it was worded by Tommy Wiseau. But, <laughs> but it, it's ha -ha. like... Right, it's it's uh, and definitely say ha ha like. Well, that. you gotta say no. It's, it's like uh, I'm a. I wanted to name my wife elderly woman behind the counter in a small town, <laughs> but my wife wasn't having it. Right, <laughs> right. How does the band? 
How does the band handle all the years of touring in various scuttlebutt? That's a good question. <laughs> What's the second part? Scuttlebutt, you know, rumors and that, stuff. That's so, <laughs> so open-ended. It's a good question. I, it's a no, hardcore fan question. It is, it is a little... Do you... My only concern about some of these questions is they're a little too inside, don't you think? Yeah, but that's what a true fan would ask. I guess that's true. <laughs> the various scu- And there's a camera question. It's important. Uh-huh. This is about his book. Uh, what made you use a Polaroid? I ask because I'm an amateur shutter bug myself. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, my gosh. That's See, the, the book that he's promoting is a photography book. Well, it's a, yeah, it's a, he uh, it's a picture book. He went uh, he took Polaroids throughout his entire career and has assembled them together, and it's like uh, performances and pictures of fans and celebrities, yeah, and, and all kinds of stuff. Jack White is in there, so I actually I'm glad. I feel like maybe you're a better. Uh, Boss, I guess is the word, than me, because I didn't realize that Travis, as a hobby, was an amateur shutterbug. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a cool thing to say to a photographer, Jim too. Jim pays that, attention to, like, my hobbies. I didn't realize yeah. that. You're an amateur shutterbug. Yep. I, didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> I've never known him to uh, shutterbug. There's, there's one more statement. It's not a question. Uh, there's no question mark after this one? No. Nope. Oh. Uh. Uh. <laughs> hmm. My wife and I are huge fans. <laughs> We even have our daughter listening to you guys. There's. <laughs> <laughs> this is already established. In the other question about your daughter and your wife. <clears throat> There's three Pearl Jammers living in my house. Oh. <laughs> Four if you count my dog Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jim, this is where you're so strong at this stuff. You did. <laughs> <laughs> you did the research to actually find out that hardcore Pearl Jam fans are known as Pearl Jammers. Pearl Jammers, and there's three of them living under this roof. Yeah. Four, actually. You count my dog Jeremy. Because, <laughs> of course. It would be a cool name for a dog. Yeah, I mean, a real hardcore Pearl Jammer would sure. be Jeremy is the name for the dog. Because that's one of those, like... Uh, I mean, that's a, that, that's a bit of a deep track. Sure. <laughs> Jeremy. That's a hardcore one. <laughs> That's a hardcore one. That's really well, good. You know, these are much better questions than, than I would have ever thought of. Right, yeah. Don't yeah. show them that you really are a fan. They will. Yeah. yeah. If you could... Uh, I think I'll make a connection. Any questions that you have in your head or had prepared, if you could put those aside. And I mean, more... they don't even compare to these. Yeah, we'll focus on those. Just two amateur shutter bugs. <sighs> yeah, because you're... Cause having a conversation. Because that's what I want. I want the perspective <clears throat> of amateur shutter bug to amateur shutter bug, and I want it to be... Pearl Jam guy to Pearl Jammer. Pearl Jammer. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's a good question. Yeah, I think that's a great it's a statement. It's not even a question. No, but it's a statement just talking to your friend. I would tell someone I like that. I just love your stuff. I'm yeah. a fan. I don't want that. There's, <laughs> there's seven things on this sheet. Three of them are just statements about myself. Cool. It'd be like if you were like, hey, I'll man. I appreciate that. Hey, Ozzy, I'm such a big fan. Like sometimes at night, I bring my dog outside and I point up to the sky and say, hey, bark at that. That's great. You know, that's a cool thing. I'd say, dude, Ozzy, I've been a fan for so long. I, I was born to be a fan. That's really great. That's cool. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know what? <like> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man. I'd be like if, <laughs> if Gene Simmons was in here and you were like, yeah, Gene, I was in church uh, on Sunday. Only pr- only difference for me is I end up praying to the well to the God of Thunder. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, and I'll say, man, your band is so great. I was made for loving you. That's yeah, that's perfect. Uh, well, trust me, this is all good stuff because they like that. Yeah, there's a, there's a photo of Gene in the book. There is, right? Yeah, yeah. Bands like to know. Musicians like to know that you're familiar with their catalog, and the way you get that done is. Dropping little references that only a true fan would do. absolutely yeah. naming the dog Jeremy is gonna like cement you. You're gonna be oh, in like yeah. Flynn. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna because he's gonna take a second and be like, Jer- "That's the name of one of our." Right. You didn't, did you? That's so cool. Yeah. He was in Mad Season too yeah. with Lane Staley, who I li- I like that band a lot. They they do a song called Wake Up, which I really like. That's all I really like about them. Is yeah, that one song. <laughs> well, yeah, he was. Like, I like how you come from. I really like that band. Well, I, mean, I like. I've heard. I've heard. I. I don't. I've heard them, and I like their music. But I, that's the song that really stands out. And I yeah, remember. he got them together. Oh, he did, Mike. Yeah, you should tell Mike that you think of that song every time uh, you're done sleeping. Because what do you do? Uh, first thing in the morning, I go wake up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, he, he 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 was in a band with Lane Staley. He was also in a band with Chris, Chris Cornell. Brown. Yeah. Amazing. Tremendous, uh, tremendous contributor this guy is. Yeah. 
Fun yeah. life. You talking about Travis or Mike McCready? My uh, Travis. <laughs> oh yeah, he's tremendous. And he's good friends with a friend of mine, a friend of ours. Actually. Who Mike McCready is? That's right. Who? Mm -hmm. Craig yeah. Guess. They're oh, very, is he? Very good friend. I didn't know he was. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if I met Mike. I was with Craig one time in Seattle, and he had a couple of guys come to the show. I don't know if Mike was one of them. That's cool. Yeah, one of them was a guy from Alice in Chains. Craig knows everyone. I mean, how does fucking Craig Gass know everyone? I don't know. As a music fan, he is really good at making friends with musicians. Do, but And they really like him. Yeah, like, it's like friend friends. You go backstage with Craig Gass, he knows everyone. He, uh, I'll, I'll say one, the one thing I was happy to do for him is he wanted to meet Ace, and I was happy to introduce him to Ace Freely. That's the only thing I've ever been able to do in return for Craig Gass. Yeah. Mike loves Ace. Uh, he does. Yeah. Let's talk about Ace. Ace came out and played uh, Black Diamond with them at the Garden once. Hey, were you oh. there? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, was How great. was it? It was awesome. Yeah. Do you like the way Ace plays live? He just kind of hangs out. He always looks like he's about to miss his cue. <laughs> Ace always just looks like he's about to fall over. He's really frightening to watch. <laughs> like, you, this you, could be you, the last one. You never, I've told him that. You never think he's going to hit the mic on time. You know, like <laughs> he forgets he has to sing. And then he's like, oh, yeah. And he just jumps up. He just gets it. And I <laughs> think Mike was on Ace's last record. Those, uh, that, like... Collaboration record that he did. I didn't, uh, I don't know that. Yeah, he came in to promote it. No, no, no. I mean, I don't know if Mike was on it. Oh, yeah, I think he was. Oh, know, what, what song they, did he play? Uh, oh, you don't know. Look it up. When you say I think he was, you mean I'm quite sure he was. I should yeah. ask him about uh, playing Black Diamond with Ace Freely. Yeah, he says it's one of the best moments of his career. I'm gonna say it, and I'm gonna call Ace by his birth name. <laughs> what are you gonna? What's his birth name? Paul Freely. It's cool. That's just, so, so that way you, you know. So when you played Black Diamond with Paul Freely. And he'll be like, whoa. What was the yeah. vibe like? Because he's going to come in and he's going to be like, oh, I thought I was just talking to some fans, but this is an industry These are guys in the know. Yeah. Let me see that. That's cold gin, too. This is Ace playing with Mike. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's with Ace's band, though. Mike McCready jumped on with Ace. Jumped on with them. That's cool. Yeah. That's great. So he's a real fan. Ace always. Yeah, he was Peter Chris for Halloween. Was That's he? awesome. Like, yeah, back in the 70s, yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's so cool to be able to be good enough at something that now you can do that with your idols. Yeah, that's got to be really, really fun. That's kind of how I feel every day when I come in here. I understand. You know what I mean? I do. Yeah. I do. I don't feel the same. You don't? Well, no. Oh, <laughs> that's unfortunate. I'm happy to see you. Right, but it's a different It's a different thing. Sure. I mean, I didn't change the course of your life by being... Wait. I mean, you didn't change the course of my life by being you. No, you're right the first time. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, you're fine. <laughs> you're good to go. <laughs> I was correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were I, fine. I didn't change the course of your life. No, 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 no. Nope. Let me see Miss Peter Chris. That's, that's Look at him. He's got an arrow pointed down to his dick. That's old Peter Chris. That's an old, old Peter Chris outfit. Well, that's because that's he's dressed the same as on Halloween. I want to guess that's 75. Let's bring in Mike McCready, who's right outside the studio. We just yeah. took a quick break. And uh, Mike McCready has a, a new book out. Yes, it's called a, Of Potato Heads and Polaroids, My Life Inside and Out of Pearl Jam. Can you want to grab him? Because he can't. There's no one here. Troy's in the restroom. Uh, I, uh, I told him to bring him in. It's a great book. It's just that I guess Mike was taking uh, Polaroids throughout his kind of entire career. Yeah. And it starts. He's very young. It starts hey, in the beginning. Hey, Mike. How you doing? What's going on, Mike? Hi, Sam. Mike, how you doing? It's nice to, to meet you. Yeah, good to see you. Sorry, in, in and like you get to you get to follow the journey. We we're just talking about your book. All right. You kind of uh, get no, to I'm follow the, right the journey through through Polaroids of everything, and it starts. I mean, there's there's celebrity stuff, there's fan stuff, there's performance stuff, there's everything in here. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's, a, it's a. Are we on? We're yeah, on. Yeah. All right. Hello. Hey, this is it. Uh, yeah, it's it's got it runs the gamut of famous people that have shown up to shows to friends of my in uh, personal friends of mine in Seattle to band, you know. Friends of Soundgarden to Mud Honey to where'd you all keep stuff. all the Polaroids? Like, did you just have a big box? That Boxes you... and lost for about two years, and then found and yeah, how'd just, they get lost? I just I don't know because I can't keep anything straight. You know, yeah, I just can't. I'm not. <laughs> I have no. I'm not a very organized guy, so let's put it that way. Did you ever like? I like. I know you're a big Kiss fan, yeah. and uh, so am I. And they said that Gene would take photos of every girl. Did you ever do that? Like, where you took pictures of the women you're with, or or, or stuff that you that you couldn't publish? I would say no, um, because I think we're kind of you know that's a different era. And um, I know I never did that, but. He did tell me he did do that when he, I took a Polaroid of him, and I knew that because I yeah. know all about Kiss. So. It's amazing that like yeah. that's how famous he was. Everyone knew he did it, and the girls still let him do it. You gotta love, right? That. It's, it's not like when you're dealing with Polaroids, you can just sneak it like it's a phone, like it's a thing. 
You know what I mean? Like, you know you're getting a Polaroid shot taken of you. Yeah, it was the 70s. Yeah. How was it doing, uh, I know you did uh, Black Diamond with uh, with Ace. How much of a thrill was that? It was a total dream come true. It's Ace Freely. It's Lee Guitar. I loved him. And uh, it's, he's, a, he's become a friend, which is crazy. And um, it, was, it was super cool uh, for him to show up and want to play with us. And uh, I just... It was. I can't even. You know, you're playing with your childhood hero. So how does that work? Like, you guys call him and say, "Look, we're going to be in town." Or do, I always I think wonder how those bands work it out. To come to the show. That was what it was at Madison Square Garden, and and I was like, "Yeah, sure." And Ace, he got a hold of us somehow, and he showed up. That's kind of yeah. amazing that his daughter. Said, hey, do you want to play with us? Oh, you guys just invite him to say to play. I invited him because, and I knew Matt Cameron played in a Kiss cover band when he was a kid, called Kiss, and they had a res- they had to, they had to stop doing it because they got. Casablanca Records sent him a cease and desist order. But they were kids. They were like 14 years old. <laughs> so Matt was the guy. Matt sang Black Diamond back then. So I thought, Matt, will you please sing Black Diamond again? Now we got Ace coming out. So At what, point, at yeah. what point did you start to uh, get that kind of, I don't know if it's, the word is recognition, but start to build relationships with people who you were kind of, were your childhood heroes? Mm. Like how mu- how far into this thing? It was about two or three years into it, you know, in terms of our the band. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, it's just probably a couple years. You know, people started coming to to that. You know, like why is why is he here? You know, or you know, actors and actresses and stuff like that. So, and then it's been a through line ever since. Like, yeah, you play a show somewhere and you have people showing up that are famous. Awesome. Right? And so I'm like have a Polaroid. I'm like I got to get this. Sure. Say, hey, you take a picture. Right. I take a picture. And since they're fans yeah. of the band. You cool. can get it done. They're generally uh, cool about it. Yeah. Has it moved yeah. into a point now where you're using your iPhone more, or are you still carrying around the Polaroid? I still carry around the Polaroid. I actually have it in my backpack right now. You just like um, the Polaroid. I like it because it's old school and it's tangible. It's frustrating, too. So it's like, I, I, and I, I don't like the frustrating aspect of it, but I... I go. I roll with it. Is it hard to get stuff like film for? It's almost like Woody Allen still writes on a on, on a typewriter. Yeah. That it's hard to get like the ribbons and stuff for. So, uh, you, oh yeah. You can get it. It's from a company called Impossible that makes it that makes stuff for it, and they they do it. Oh yeah, job. it went out of business for a while, right? Yeah. Polaroid went out of business. It did, for a yeah. While. You should watch. There's a movie called uh, Year Zero, which is about the whole history of what happened with Polaroid. So. And tra- tra- uh, Travis, our guy, our producer, hey, Travis. is uh, one of the the uh, gigantic. This is Kevin, by the way. So another one of our hey, guests today, Kevin. Today, Kevin. Yeah. Now, Travis is a huge uh, Pearl Jam. I, I would say Travis is the biggest Pearl Jam him I've ever met in my life, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. You've met, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and probably not the mic's here. Yeah. And I know you wanted to ask a question. And, Go for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I have some questions that I definitely wrote. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll definitely answer them. Cool. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. Uh, are you guys gigging anytime soon? No. Not that I know of. Right now, you know, we're not... Ed's on tour right now, and I'm working on a film called Sadie by Megan Griffiths, and we're all kind of doing stuff separately right now. What are you doing on the film? Uh, scoring it. Oh, cool. So that's kind of been something I've been wanting to do for a while. I did another movie called Fat Kid Rules the World. I've done a little TV thing with Fringe. and So I'm, I'm really trying to get into that aspect of things. So. Do you see the movie first before you score it, or how does it work? Or they tell you the it tone? It on the director. Um, this, this time I did see the movie first. I read the script. I really liked it. I saw the movie. Then you kind of go over scene by scene with the director, and, and that's, her name is Megan Griffiths. And it's, it's interesting because directors will tell you, I want it to look this way, and, and they won't talk in musical terms, so you have to kind of interpret what they're saying. And but it's fun. It's totally different than writing songs for Pearl Jam because kind of less is more a lot of sure. times. So. Travis, sorry, man. I didn't mean to rush. Sorry, what? You, you, you can ask another question. I'm, he's a bigger fan, so I would... Oh, uh, well, like, all kidding aside, when you're out there and you're rocking, yeah. uh, is there any better feeling? Uh, it's you know the the obvious one, um, but uh, <laughs> um, but I, I would say I would say it's 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 unlike anything that you can ever do. It's just you know having the forty thousand people scream and having their energy come at you. It's it's intense and amazing, and then you're then the then you're just worn out from it the next day. But then it's then you get to do. Does it, it hurt in rela- so. like in relationships? It's almost like nothing compares to that feeling. You know, it's sex like, is great, but no high in a relationship will ever be as good as that. It's a crazy high. It's like this symbiotic thing between the band and the the the, the crowd, and it's I, you can't even put it into words. It's not it's not quantifiable. It's like it's unreal. Is it hard to get to sleep after? Because yeah, you're it on takes such a while. A... It takes a little while. Yeah. So it's big. It's like the adrenaline is still going. You want it just to keep going, and then you're gonna lay down. It's like ugh. Yeah, you're just kind of like I'm still awake. 
Yeah. When when you guys uh, like broke and and other band other grunge bands were breaking at the same time, like Soundgarden and bands like that, mm-hmm. um, the fact that you guys because Temple of the Dog yeah. is a band as Pearl Jam was breaking and everything, was there a competition? Between you guys, or was it was that, it more of a that's peer a good group? question? The interesting. Thank the, you. So, um, Thank you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna refer to Johnny Ramone on this, which is this is a direct quote that he told me. It's like, you guys, you guys are too nice with each other. You know, we, we try to fuck over everybody. Sorry, live radio. It's fine. Uh, no, sure. it's good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, at every turn that we could, and when we were coming up, and 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 so in terms of, I always think of it in that way. It's like we were all. Had obviously had a healthy competition with each other, but mm-hmm. we all would hang out with each other and go to each other's parties, and because it, it was a small town back then, it was like just a real provincial, tiny town, and everybody knew each other, so was, we would support each other a lot. You know? Was there any band that joined the scene as it was blowing up that you guys were like, "Fuck that band," they weren't around. I was so busy with my band and trying to keep that thing rolling that I didn't have time to even care about any of that stuff. Right. What, you know? What's that tough like to go from like? Uh, Pearl Jam is this band that we're kind of putting together and, and we're just making cool music and everything to now we've got this level of success that we have to maintain. Yeah, yeah it was. It was cr- just chaotic and insane and uh, but awesome and your dreams are coming true and then it's freaky and weird and but we got to keep it going because we want to do another record and this is great and we're getting bigger and well that's the part right like your yeah. dreams are coming true but yeah. now you have to main you have to keep them going that but and also in the terms of like not doing it in the way bands generally do it because we kind of pulled back and we stopped doing videos and 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 we were told by the, at that time by the record company that we you guys you'll be gone if you don't do a, a video for black and all this kind of stuff and we're still around, so I guess that, I guess that worked to not do that. But that was Jeff and Ed's kind of vision to like let's pull back and not do a ton of press and let's not be in there and burn ourselves out. Travis, did you want to say? I, I, Which I feel badly. I, 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 I wanted to be the I wanted to be the guy that was doing press and sure. did, I wanted to be as big as you too. So that was it. Were you? Does that become an argument then? Like if you're because you want that spotlight, you yeah. want the fame that goes with it. You don't well, want to be the. We all talk about it, but it's you know it, in terms of it just it made sense at the time. I, I trust. Ed and Jeff kind of in stone and implicitly in terms of their thought process on what we should do with this man. So, did you want to be a front man? Like, was that no. part of it, or you're happy in your? I spot? love being a lead guitar player. Yeah. It's what I've wanted to do since I was 11 years old. So that was it. Travis, do you want to? So, so yeah, like along those lines, how does the band handle all the years of touring and various scuttlebutt? We have a lot of. Uh, <laughs> Well, well, now we handle it with a lot of Epsom salts and ointments. Is that, what, is that how scuttlebutt is handled generally? <laughs> Thank you. What, are, you are you a pirate? A, <laughs> Thank you. Well, well we swap the poop deck first, and then uh, you know we uh, we we. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, we just you know we have our highs and lows, and we fought, and we argue, and we love each other, and then and then we then we fight again, and then we we just I don't know how we keep doing it, you know, and we just keep doing it, and. Uh, I think we generally enjoy playing with each other, and that's. I think. I think my playing is better with those guys than it is with anybody else because I think they bring something out. We've played a, almost a thousand shows together, so that there's a there's an unspoken there's a thing that happens with a band like that. You just understand each other. You, yeah. It, yeah, it makes sense. Is there anybody? Uh, uh, did you have to go through and get? The rights to publish all these photos? Uh-huh. Like, did you have to reach out to everybody that you're? We, I, I didn't personally, but we, uh, yeah, you know, our, yeah, our I mean, people you're... did, and. You know, they had to sign a waiver, or did most of them did, and they most of them were into it. Well, even so. fans, though. Yeah. But if fans are at a show, yeah. they probably don't have to because you're in a public place right. and you know that they're taking well, pictures. Well, and we have a thing that says that as you go into yeah. the, you know, you may be filmed and, you know. And yeah, so. I don't see anybody suing for a Polaroid from a concert. It's, it's a great book, yeah. by the way. I've looked through it. It's amazing how many interesting pr- personal photos there are. Yeah. Uh, there's photos of you and celebrities. There's just photos of you hanging out. There's photos of the fans. Uh, some, some of them have little notations on them. It's yeah. really great, man. It, it's, it seems like a very, very personal thing. It is. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a visual journey of my life, and there's stories that go along with all of it, and uh, you know, that's, that's why I'm stoked to finally have this thing out. So. Travis? It makes yep. sense to take all those Polaroids for 20 years. So, so I mean, yeah. the, the, the fans that are in this book, like, they must be floating on cloud nine. Um, from what I, well, I did a, a book signing in Seattle, and, and a lot, you know, some will come up and go, that's me right there, can you sign right in there? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's cool. So they can see themselves, and they're in there, and I, it's, we have very passionate fans that follow us around the world, and you'll see a lot of them in the same, same photos, and uh, so that, yeah, find, it's a, find, where's Waldo? It's like, find yourself. Yeah. Along the lines of you saying that Ed 
and Jeff were, you know, let's push, let's pull back, let's not do interviews, let's not do videos. Mm -hmm. Were were you against the whole Ticketmaster thing as well, or um, was I, that kind of just you going along with everything? No, I felt I felt strongly about that at the time because we were we were trying. So our band. A backstory to that is that we never we never take kind of any promotion or any kind of money from any corporations or anything to go out and tour. We do it all of ourselves, and we pay for all of our crew and our, our bands and all that stuff, and we always have. And we were doing that back in the 90s, and uh, we just couldn't afford... We didn't want to raise our ticket prices, so and we wanted to keep them as low as possible, and, and but be able to keep ourselves on the road. Why weren't you taking corporate money? Because it's just we don't what kind want. Of question I don't, is that? I just, well, I mean, I don't it's a question. Total uh, more. No, it's a good question. It's no, it's a great question because if we were, you know, if we were really kind of in it for that, we would probably do that. You know, for the for this the the for that, and you know, it would probably. You just didn't want to be in bed with these corporations. I just we didn't. It's not part of our our ethos or our ethic, or it just just didn't seem right. So we, you know, not in any kind of weird pretentious way. We just want to do it. You ourselves. just weren't comfortable so, with it. It's a dia. It's a do it yourself. I mean, like Jeff came from Green River and Ed, and all, we all, all came from this small scene. Uh, Ed down in San Diego, that you know you have to do it yourself. You do all your flyers, and you and then and we always kind of felt that in our soul, and that's how we still do it. So at any rate. We couldn't. We couldn't afford to keep our tickets as low as we wanted to, but with that, with that, uh, the the service charge on it. So was that it, was the problem. Was yeah. it difficult to know the? And we were asked by the government. It's like we didn't bring it up. We were asked. What do you mean? You're asked what? We were asked to to, to testify whether they were a, a monopoly. That was they just, right. So when they we didn't, clearly were right. Well, it turns out they weren't. <laughs> Who said that? This, the court. Janet Reno. Yeah, the government. Yeah. So it's, it, but we do business with them now. So it's like, it's, well, that's you what know, I was going to ask. Was it difficult yeah. when you start, when you know, okay, we're going to start doing business with Ticketmaster again? Yeah. You have to be like, okay, we don't know how our fans are going to take this because they know how public that fight's been. Yeah. It's, I don't think so. I think it, you just kind of have to move on. And, you know, we want to play in the places where fans can come see sure. us and where it's not impossible for them to go see us like it was when we tried to do a tour by ourselves. So what that's, that's, that's more you? important. We just would, you know, like, if, Oh, God, I can't even remember. Like in Utah, out by a ski resort, and gotcha. like all sorts of crazy. And it was annoying. It was just hard to put on a show by yourself without. And fans yeah. can find it. Your intentions yeah. are right, but it, it's kind of hard when Ticketmaster owns, or, or Live Nation owns the venues. Yeah. It's a whole thing, and it's but like you want to describe to gigs. We do that now with them, and we're all happy to do business with them. So it's like, it's yeah, because we want our fans to come to the shows, you know, and that's the most important thing is to make it easy for them. If people had to choose between, like, we all know the fees suck, but if they had to choose between paying the fees and seeing you, or not paying the fees and seeing you once every three years, they'd pay the fees and see you. People, as a fan, right. would rather just yeah. go see the band. You know, I pay. I go to fees, see. The fees are high, weren't they high? That was the, yeah. that was the thing. We couldn't afford to take our our crew and our rogues and keep our ticket our ticket prices down at that time. were probably sure. sixty bucks or something or fifty. I didn't even remember back then. But we try to keep it as low as possible as we still do. Sure, and we couldn't do it. Without. And made it harder with those. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Travis, did you want? Because you you know the band better than anybody. Uh, I mean, no, I think I'm good. You sure? Right. Yeah. Okay. There's there the one, one you wanted. Well, there was one because Travis was talking about you before, and there was the one thing about your dog that I thought. Yeah, it just it, don't be embarrassed. Oh, He's embarrassed. Tell me right. about your dog. Right. right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, my my wife and I we're, we're both huge fans, and we've got a daughter that listens to you guys okay. now as well. Uh, so there's you know three pearl jammers in my house, and four if you count my dog Jeremy. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Is that uh, I, we don't? Is that traditional? Uh, come here, Jeremy. Come here, Jeremy. <laughs> or is, is that lingo? Did the do they call themselves pearl jammers generally? Um, or is, I would say it's. I think they call themselves jamily and things like that. No. So that's that's the term. That's that's nice. I see. Yeah. So jamily is more the term. Oh, yeah. Travis, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's I've what I'm saying. Wrong the whole time. Yeah. 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 No, you, whatever. Whatever works. makes you happy. Your as dog a fan. Jeremy, right? <laughs> <on>. <laughs>